AIDA for yelling at my sister-in-law. Context here, I'm an ex-heroin addict. The why and how isn't important, but I got hooked at 15, tried to get clean at 17, but relapsed hard. Finally got my act together and got off it for good at 21. I'm 26 now and completely clean. I don't even drink, except for on special occasions where I'll have two or three drinks at most. Now my older brother and his wife have been together since shortly before I had my bad relapse, and she's convinced that I'm just a ticking time bomb waiting to relapse again. The first year or so, I understood her concerns, and she wasn't the only person who had them. However, it's been almost six years since I was anywhere near the stuff, and she still won't have that I'm gonna stay clean. She's very vocal about these concerns too. If I get sick, she tells our entire family that she thinks I've relapsed again and I'm having withdrawals. She made a huge scene on Christmas Day two years ago because I had a cold and was a bit sniffly and she decided that I must have been doing a ton of coke. If anything goes missing from any of the family's houses, she accuses me of having stolen it for drug money. I mostly just grin and bear it so as to not make waves but recently she took it a step too far. I went away recently with some friends. On the first day of my trip, I dropped an broke my phone. Because she and my brother were unable to get a hold of me for a few days, she became convinced I had gone on a massive dope bender and began telling my family and friends that she knew this was the case. When I got home, I found myself being given an intervention and told how disappointed people were. It was kinda the straw that broke the camel's back and I sorta of flipped at my sister-in-law. I yelled at her asking why the frick she doesn't trust me and why she's so hell-bent on undermining my success and believing that I'm incapable of staying clean. She got upset and told me she was only concerned for my well-being, but I said in my opinion that's bullcrap. At this point it's absolutely about her not having faith in me and if she feels that way, she should just stay the frick out of my business. At that point she started crying and she and my brother left. I'm being told left and right that I'm the a-hole and ungrateful because she's only looking out for me and I need to apologize, but I'm still upset that she evidently believes I'm incapable of doing this. So is he the a-hole here? I'm genuinely interested. What's your opinion on this? AITA for selling my daughter's car after discovering her texting and driving. When my daughter was 14, wife and I decided we would buy a car for her to use on her 16th if she proved herself to be responsible, got good grades, etc. There would be a contract of sorts to ensure we were all on the same page. The stipulations were continuing, good grades, good attitude, she could only bring one friend with her somewhere to begin with, we had to know where she was and the obvious too, don't drink and drive and don't text and drive. We made it clear that we were buying the car but it was for her to use. We got the car, a 2012 Honda Civic. She has a summer job right now, it's summer break, so she's out doing stuff with her friends, etc. In a few months, she will be off to college. Everything was going swimmingly. Until someone on that next door app started posting pictures and videos of bad drivers in the area. And lo and behold, my daughter was posted with her face down as she texted and rolled through a stop sign. Once with her face down in her phone at the stoplight. I was livid. My wife was the one who showed it to me. We found out there were more instances from her Instagram stories and we decided no. Wife and I up and sold the car. We didn't lose very much in the process, except of course our daughter completely came unraveled. It's so unfair, I didn't hurt anyone, everyone's doing it, how am I supposed to get to work, what about when I go to college? Well, we said no. It's not unfair, you hurt us by being a crappy, irresponsible driver. No, not everyone's doing it. You can walk, ride your bike or take a bus and as for college, you don't need the car to get to and from classes. And again, ride your bike or walk. She tried to play the how can you send your daughter to college without her safety in mind card and I said, oh well, 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 now you're concerned about your safety. And she just up and screamed. This has everyone in our life up in arms and divided. Her grandparents think we're being over the top and awful, that grounding her would have been sufficient. They've threatened that they will buy her a car again if we try to send her to college without one. The car is already sold, so there's no going back. I think what we did was absolutely correct. That actions have consequences and we would be in the wrong to pull back from that. In terms of her going to college, well she made that choice. She had a car, it came with certain stipulations, she disobeyed us and now she pays the price. So am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for giving my friend a sip of water? 
I think I'm perfectly justified, so this feels to me a little like a request for validation, but you can help settle a dispute between me and my son. He called me TA for breaking the hospital rules and giving my friend some sips of water. She had received nothing to drink or eat for more than 24 hours before surgery, and despite being on IV fluids, her mouth was parched. The rule was nothing by mouth, but she was begging the nurses for just a sip of water or some ice chips or a wet rag to suck on. If you've ever been in this situation, you know how miserable this is. Because I didn't see how one or two tablespoons of water could hurt, especially as they'd allowed it for her to swallow some pills. I gave her a sip of water a couple of times when the nurse wasn't looking. My son says I'm in the wrong for breaking the rules and possibly endangering my friend. I say the rules are overkill. AITA. I'm especially interested in the opinion of medical professionals who can explain to me why my actions were dangerous. Update. Wow, that was fast. I now know that I was TA. My friend came through the surgery fine, but I would have been devastated if I had been the cause of complications. Update 2. So I'm done for now. Got RL stuff and won't be looking at my phone for a bit. It's been interesting. I was told to try to engage in discussion without getting defensive, but they seem really hard to do without getting downvoted into oblivion. I think I would have been better off simply not responding. Going back to lurking. AITA for renting my Airbnb house just days before my sister planned to stay there. It was part of our agreement, but she says because of the timing, I'm a major a-hole. I guess where to start? This is a throwaway because I'm very active on the Airbnb sub and I don't want people to misconstrue that this is somehow a backdoor advertisement for my place. I'm 23. About 5 years ago I got a really nice inheritance from my grandmother after years and years of probate. I'm madly in love with this little ski town in northern New Mexico, so I went and bought a condo there. I use it whenever I can, but to make it feasible, I also put it on Airbnb. It doesn't really make me any money, but I figure I'm allowing other people to pay my equity and plus I have an awesome place I can use whenever I want. I try to be generous with my family regarding the condo, but after years of it being on the Airbnb market, I finally had to tell people that I can't accept long-term free reservations. It just happened too many times where all my friends and family would reserve big holidays or whatever months in advance and then not only would I miss out on the income from those big events, a few times they didn't even show or arrived late or left early. To illustrate how big a deal this is, I make 80% of my yearly income payment over about 25 days of holidays. It's a huge deal to miss out on that income. My sister and I are sisters for sure, but we don't really get along that well. It's even more exacerbated because she blew through all of her inheritance in about two years and really doesn't have much to show for it. So my house is a major thorn in her side. In April she asked me if she could reserve my condo for 4th of July week. I told her I couldn't block it out on my Airbnb calendar, but as long as no one rented it she could use it. I even looked through my texts and I even told her when we were talking about this, please understand that if someone rents it last minute, I have to be able to get the income. She agreed to that. I thought it would be a non-issue because the place always rents well in advance for 4th of July, but this year it didn't. She was supposed to drive up Saturday the 29th. On Friday the 28th I got a rental request for not only 4th of July week, at the premium price. They wanted to stay on through middle of September. This is thousands of dollars which will help me install a new hot water heater. I told my sister that I was sorry but the place rented last minute so I had to let it go to the paying customer. Well all hell broke loose. She screamed her head off at me saying that she had made non-refundable rafting reservations, made special arrangements with her ex to get the kids that week and sort her relationship with her boss for extra vacation time. I told her I was really sorry but that had been part of our agreement. She said I was a stupid B and our agreement meant that last minute meant like week prior, not the day prior. I hung up on her because I don't need to be called names. But then I got many calls from my other siblings and mom saying that I was really screwing my sister over. Was I the acorn? AITA for charging $3000 for her to get her dog back. Hey Reddit, long time lurking, first time posting, so excuse any typos. So here's the situation, I love dogs. So much so that my entire career at this point is dog related. 
part-time at a pet store with dog grooming, part-time at an abused slash unadoptable pet sanctuary, volunteering at animal shelters on my days off and squeezing in dog sitting jobs in the tiniest bit of free time I have left over. Make no mistake. I love me a good puppo, despite not having one of my own because I'm still living with my parents. So recently my mom's friend, we'll call her Lauren, asked me to look after her little chihuahua Bonnie for the weekend and I agreed. Thing is, that was 5 months ago. After the weekend was up I couldn't get a hold of Lauren, in fact no one could. I tracked down the Lauren's daughter, who explained to me that her mom had Munchausen syndrome and had been hopping hospitals trying to get a doctor to agree with her. What's worse is that Bonnie wasn't Lauren's only dog. Lauren had left Bonnie's blind and deaf big brother Wilson in the yard of condemned house where he died of neglect and exposure three months ago. After the person Lauren asked to keep an eye on him stopped being able to come by to feed him. Last week Lauren finally called me to say she was coming to pick Bonnie up on the 26th. Thing is, my family and I have fallen in love with the goofy little dog and I don't want to give her up without knowing she's going to a good place. After some thought, I told Lauren that I'd be happy to give her dog back if she could. Prove to me that she has a secure place of residence, that isn't her condemned house. Prove to me that she has an income and pay me back for all the days of dog sitting, vet fees and cost of the supplies I needed to take care of Bonnie. The last bit is where this goes from I'm obviously not the a-hole to maybe I am. See, I charge on the lower end for dog sitting, about $15 for a half an hour visit and $20 for overnight. As of last week, Bonnie has been with me for 111 days at overnight charges. That's a starting cost of $2,220, a $500 vet bill from when I had to get some of Bonnie's teeth pulled and another $250 of just general pet supplies like food, treats, poop bags, etc. Altogether, it'll be over $3,000 by the 26th when she claims she'll come and get her dog. When I told Lauren this, she burst out in tears, explaining to me that she needed Bonnie now that Wilson was gone, that the dog was her life, but she couldn't afford my fees. I don't doubt that Lauren loves this dog and she's obviously not mentally well and could use a companion to keep her grounded, but at the same time I don't know how much I can trust a woman who just dumped her dogs on two unsuspecting people without a word for months on end and had one of them die of neglect because of it. So let me have it ready, AITA for not giving this woman's dog back until she paid me the free grand. Let me know if I'm being unreasonable here. Update. Holy hell, this blew up. Thanks for the gold and silver to whoever gave it to me. I see a lot of things in the comments that I'd like to address though. I was technically hired to care for Bonnie. I have text receipts of me providing her my rates and her agreeing to pay. As much as I love dogs, I'm running a business here. I can't just give 109 additional days as freebies. The girl who was taking care of Wilson was only in town for that month. After that she started driving an hour out of her way to go take care of him until she couldn't afford to do so. No neighbors wanted anything to do with Lauren or her dogs and that's why he was left to die. I actually got doors shut in my face when I went around asking. I get that ITAH for even having terms of conditions for her to get her dog back. Perhaps I'm naive. But I was really hoping that maybe her losing her house and her other dog might put some sense in her head. If she did somehow come up with the money, I'd still make house checks regularly to make sure Bella was in a safe environment and would call our ASPCA animal cruelty responders if she wasn't. Thanks for all the advice. Bonnie and I are lawyering up just in case, but I doubt she'll go to the police. She's made a lot of fake calls to them before and no longer trusts them. And I'm going friends with the sheriff in our country because I sit for his golden. Her name is Chewy and she's a very good girl. So what's your opinion on this story or any other story in this video? Who's the a-hole and who's not the a-hole? Tell me what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to comment, like, share and subscribe to my channel for more of these videos. Bye!